All right, guys, Mark Fresh, Pro Tech Dog Training, and Eros on the agility. And what I've done is I picked a couple items that he can do real easy. The barrels, he goes over the carpet, a lot of help. Food's right in front of his nose. Uh, there's some things I'm doing on that I'll maybe accent in a day or so. And we go to this, we want pattern, right? Hup. And he's already used to this. Even within three days, he already knows what's going on. Find it, good boy, find it. Very intelligent little guy. Good boy, good, find it. Good, so we're trying to set up the pattern on this one as well, which is find it, find it, find it, and then break into toy. Good boy, Eros. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Good boy. And then they throw the toy at the end of it, right? You can send it. So you keep your same patterns. You build a pattern with this as well. Now, we've got this. This is too high for him to jump up on. And the, the lengths across, he wouldn't understand it. But you can break him into it and get him doing it just by picking him up. So we're going to put the phone on the tripod and uh, get it set up for you. And then I'll kind of show you how we do that, okay? Good boy. So what we're going to do is actually, I'm going to keep it a little bit towards, because I want you to see the sway bridge. All right. Eros, come on. And Eros is over here doing his own thing. Come on, Eros. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Yay. He's over on the, on the wacky boards doing it on his own. Okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to go over here and notice one of the things, guys. I put him back on the flat. He's wearing the pinch, but he's not on the pinch. And the biggest reason for that is that you do not want to have any corrections associated with something you want totally positive. So you always take him off the pinch, off his correction item, and when you're working him through this, it's always a positive thing. A lot of praise, a lot of food. If he, if he makes mistakes and falls off, you don't really worry about it. You just come back at it again, and he starts learning that he's got to do this in the right way. And they love it anyway. This builds a lot of confidence the agility. Come on, now think about his age, he's so small. So that was a little demo of the, the agility. So let's go over some rules that we do when we do this. When I start agility, I usually try to do what I've been doing with him. Put him on the table, put him on the bowls, things that he's already familiar with. Get him flowing a little bit and then break real quick and go over to his agility. When I go over to the agility, I say agility to him. Let's go do agility. Come on, agility. I'm giving him a... a a marker word that's going to mean that he's going into that. If you ever see the ring sport guys, they always say the, the exercise right as they start it. And they cue the dog that way, you know, um, whatever it may be. They cue the dog into the exercise with a cue word, right? So in this case, it's agility. Let's go do agility. Come on, let's go do agility. And then I go over and I start my agility routine. I start wanting to flow through the, all the items that he can do. I'm not doing all of them, obviously. He can't jump on the high, he can't go through that window, he can't go over the seven foot wall, but we're gonna do what he can do. That's all really related to his balance and a little precarious, like the wacky boards there, right? Or the, or the sway bridge here, where it's really uh, unsure for him. And when we start this when they're young like this, it's gonna give the dog a lot of confidence, can give him a boost up, real important. So the other thing you notice, as I put him on the flat collar, 
there's no corrections that you want. You want all positive. So I don't want any any uh, negative as far as what he's going in to do. We're just going to coerce him with the food, a lot of motivational chatter. I'm trying to make him feel very positive about doing the agility. Okay. And then the other thing that we do is when we go to do something, we usually do it in patterns of twos and threes. So I'll run him through the wacky boards once, I'll come back and I'll do it again. If he falls off, I just loop right back to where he's at. I might cut that in half with that wacky board and start at another position, but I always make him come around and do it again. And we do patterns of twos and threes because again, that's what it's all about, the powers of twos and threes. In learning, the more you do this, the more he's gonna start grasping the concepts because you always do things in patterns of twos and threes. He's gonna learn faster. He's gonna be able to grasp what you're trying to get across to him because he understands that when things happen in pattern, that's what dad wants me to do. So we start that at a very young age. Everything's in patterns of twos and threes. The powers of twos and threes goes deep in everything I do. And that's how a dog learns. And when you build that way, you're, you're stretching that muscle and that muscle starts to build better and better as he grows up. You get a very intelligent dog, a very uh, receptive dog to what you're trying to do because they understand the logic of what you're doing over time right because it all adds up two and two always adds up to four remember what I said all right so we're done for this this is the agility kind of a primer on how I do the agility we keep it easy for the dog we don't throw anything over that he's gonna fail we want to always have him succeeding so we don't want to fall him off and fall on his head we want him to do it and make him sure that he's got the uh, the support from me and the uh, ability to do things and I just basically kind of stretch them a little bit more, a little bit more. So I'll talk to you guys later. Mark Barashi, ProTech Dog Training and Eros doing our agility. Good boy, good. All right, now you're gonna see the, the finished product come together as I tie some of these concepts that he already understands. Now I need to start um, solidifying them, right? By doing little tricks that make sure that the dog understands the total concepts before he goes back home which means a longer pause in between things. His name, a nice pause, and then the end of the, to the explosion release, really. either going after a toy or yep, into something else. Start accenting the voice uh, a lot more and the verbal command a lot more than helping him with my body language and all that. It's not gonna happen overnight. We just basically try to phase that out, right? We're always trying to grow the dog and his ability to understand what we're asking of him and what he's doing. So by the time he gets home, hopefully I'll have a good understanding of all this. And I've got to work with the owner. They're going to come out for a lesson this week. And I'll let him go when uh, his time, I think he's due to go home on the 18th. Usually it's a 30-month training program and you're paying me for my time. So I spend 30 days and I work the dog to whatever I can get him to work at. And then I work with the owner and we go through their, their phase, right? So that's why I always tell my customers, I don't do it like I used to. I used to say, your dog will learn X, Y, and Z. I don't do it that way anymore because I'm working on the dog's brain and his, where is his head at in the work? We're gonna get there, we're gonna do all this stuff, he's gonna work, but the problem is that I do not build that way anymore. I don't worry about the dog succeeding with the actions. I care about where the dog's head's at in the work and what is every he gives me is what I'm gonna get and I'm not gonna push him too hard and yank his head off. I don't do the yank and crank anymore, those days are gone, right? So I'm building a house. The, the whole goal is to make sure we do this right so that he becomes an excellent dog and they can rely on that, right? Again, they're paying me for my time. Right. I thank you very much, Mark Farashi, ProTech Dog Training. I'll see you later.